Hey guys, Crypto Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited today because I have this black box in front of me and if I open ooh, this black box, take something out and take this out of the bag, I am now holding in my hand what is effectively, as far as I know, the cheapest cooled astrophotography full frame camera. This camera is full frame. So let's open up the uh, dust cap and you can see that sensor is incredibly huge. Full frame sensor, absolutely amazing. Uh, fun fact, this is the first time that I'm actually uh, seeing in real life or uh, much less touching an actual dedicated cooled astrophotography camera that is full frame. So it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. And if you compare it to something like the uh, ZW, 2600 MC, which is an APS-C size sensor. Dang, the difference in sensor size, let me, let me put them exactly at the same level, but the difference in sensor size is insane. It's just not the same at all. And I thought APS-C there was big already. Now this, this is huge. Okay, taking a step back though, what is this camera? This is the Tech Sky Eye 24 AC camera. 24 because it has 24 megapixels. We'll get to back to that in a moment. And it is, as I mentioned, a full frame camera. It is a full frame color camera specifically. And it is the Tech equivalent to the uh, ZW ASI 2400 MC Pro, except that the ZW version costs uh, 3,000 US dollars, whereas this one costs 2,400 US dollars. So $600 cheaper for what I expect to be effectively a very similar camera. And even in my opinion, slightly more flexible because as usual, you can select your low conversion gain or your high conversion gain as you wish directly within the imaging software, rather than having to rely on a gain switch from low conversion gain to high conversion gain. This uh, difference in price is compounded by the fact that it also comes for free with a guide camera, which is the, uh, what's the name? Uh, the, 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 the GPM462M guide camera. It's a monochrome guide camera with the IMX462 uh, sensor, which is not great by any means, but it's nice to be getting that and I'll definitely be using it together with uh, this full frame camera. So now it's disclosure time. I got this camera together with the guide camera uh, on loan from TubeTech. So they sent me that for review. At, once I'm done reviewing the camera, I will be sending it back to them. That said, as usual, uh, I have full control over this review. I can say as much negative or positive that I want in this review which is effectively as usual. With that out of the way, I also want to mention that this video is going to be a first look at the camera. I do not have the weather to actually play with this camera for at least two weeks. And I wanted to release something first because I do believe that if there are people looking at the ASI version of this camera from ZWO, it makes sense to be aware that this thing exists since it, it can save so much money, right? $600, that's not nothing. So I just wanted to uh, get ahead of it. Of course, I did you know, a sensor analysis with SharpCap, that kind of stuff, so we'll have a look at that. And in a future video, I'll be doing the actual test under the stars. Anyway, let's have a look at the specifications of this camera. And I am on the TopeTech website, so you can see the Sky Eye 24 ac for 2,400 US dollars, tax included. And uh, you can choose whether you want to have the anti-reflective -ref glass, I believe this is what I got or the IR cut filter glass. Okay, but what are the specifications? So, full frame sensor, the IMX410 sensor, this is as expected, and you can see the image resolution is uh, six times four, 24 megapixels, which, is, which sounds a bit weird because my APS-C size uh, cameras from both TopeTech and ZWO, much smaller sensor, they have 26 megapixels. So what gives? Well, it simply gives that the pixels on this camera here, on this particular sensor are huge. If I go down to the uh, pixel size, you can see it is 5.94 micrometer pixels, which are huge compared to like 3.76 micrometers for something like the 2600 mm RMC or the TubeTech equivalent with the IMX571 sensors. So that means that this camera should be right at home on high focal length telescopes because then your pixel scale can be used to match, you know, to high focal lengths very easily. But what about smaller telescopes? Because yes, I plan on using this with my Red Cat 51. 
<laughs> so I will have an extremely undersampled setup. And if you're not familiar with what undersampling is, it's basically uh, when I have a telescope and camera combination that captures a certain amount of detail that is much less, or actually just less than the amount of detail that I could potentially be capturing for my current atmospheric conditions. A lot of people see undersampling as a sin. It is not, it is perfectly fine to be undersampled. Most terrestrial photos are undersampled. It's not a big deal at all. And uh, once I have finally get to test it under the stars, I'll be showing you the results taken with the Red Cat 51, just so that hopefully you can be convinced. Okay, going back to the, the specifications, we have a 14-bit ADC, which I think is perfectly enough. I know a lot of people look at that spec as, it's, as if it were super important, but to me, it's not super important. It's just a component that will go towards the full well depth and therefore the dynamic range in the end. But it's not a big deal in, in and of itself, in my opinion. Uh, and then we have the usual stuff, a 510 megabytes buffer. We have a USB-C connection with two uh, USB 2 ports. And we also have four bright LEDs. They're red LEDs and they're actually recessed so that I can simply put some electrician tape on top to make them completely go away. But it's uh, something to know that it comes with those LEDs as usual with Top Tech cameras. Because they're so easy to cover, it's not a big deal, but something to keep in mind. We get an effective cooling temperature of minus 35 degrees Celsius. I've measured it. I'll come back to it in a moment. And a full well of uh, 100,000 electrons, basically, which is really good. The quantum efficiency of above 80% is roughly the same as its uh, competitor, like the ASI 6200 MC MM Pro or the APS-C formatted uh, ASI 2600. So we are in very decent specs. The only thing that is different from other cameras is those huge pixels. Now let's have a look at how it looks like in terms of field of view. So I have here with the Red Cat 51, the field of view that you would get with the full frame sensor in red, so that thing, and in green is what we would be getting with an APS-C size sensor. Um, and yeah, we get so much more field of view from this, but it also means that it is so much more demanding on your telescope. Full frame sensor means you need to have a good telescope. The Red Cat should be good enough. There's things like the uh, Rokinon or Samyang 135 that should work with full frame sensors. Or of course, Takahashi FSQ telescopes will work as well, but some other telescopes might have, might have trouble with full frame. That said, the camera does come with collimation screws, not collimation screws, but actually tilt adjustment screws if you need to uh, adjust the tilt of your camera. This is something that I typically never want to do because it's a lot of pain, but I know uh, with a full frame sensor, it might be necessary for me to do. Anyway, going back to those uh, field of views, another thing that we see is the uh, actual... So with this sensor, together with the Red Cat, you would get almost five arc seconds <laughs> per pixel. <laughs> that is not a lot of detail. That's a lot of field of view on a single pixel, uh, which is a good thing when you want to overwhelm the read noise quickly because then you have more electrons on your single pixel. Uh, but it's not a great thing when you want to capture as many details as possible. So with a red cat, this is really to grab the most field of view that you'd you could possibly get in one shot. So that's the main use of a full frame sensor in that case. If you're going for long focal length telescopes, like something like the William Optics Pleiades 111 f4.8 telescope, we're getting a much more reasonable 2.3 arc seconds per pixel, which is, in my opinion, completely 100% acceptable. And actually, even with uh, five arc seconds per pixel that I would get with this and the red cat, you'll see once I get the pictures in, you'll be impressed. And I know for a fact, because I've already used large pixel cameras with very short focal lengths, like the ASI-294 paired with a 135 millimeter lens. And that's why I always say, don't sweat the undersampling too much. And by the way, even with the Pleiad 111, uh, we still have a field of view that co covers the entirety of Andromeda. That is the power of full frame. 
And we also see as part of this, by the way, that the read noise that I was mentioning earlier, which should be very easy to swamp thanks to those uh, very large pixels, is between 1.95 to 4.48 electrons. I actually measured it in sharp cap and uh, spoiler alert, it's lower than what the specs say. And actually the effective cooling temperature is also better than what the specs say. Of course, just like the ESI, there is zero M glow with this camera. I have checked it on a long dark frame. And as usual with those Tooptech uh, cameras, we have an anti-dew system that has four levels. Uh, typically I use level one or two, which seem to be more than enough to prevent dew formation on the camera. Level four is very powerful. <laughs> I can feel the camera actually, the whole body get, becoming warm when I set level four, but it's the same with other Tech cameras. Okay, quick word about the cooling. So I tested the cooling on the camera in a temperature controlled room and the temperature was a constant 28 degrees Celsius. And I basically told the camera to cool down to uh, minus 15 degrees Celsius. So that would be 43 degrees below ambient temperature, which is much more than the uh, spec 35 degrees. And the camera managed to get to minus 12 degrees Celsius. It struggled to get there, but it did get there with the cooler power at 95% although it never seemed to reach 100. It stayed at 95% the whole time and the dew heater on to level two. So that means that I have verified the camera can support uh, a cooling of up to 39 degrees below ambient, which is better than advertised. Of course, once you use it outside and you have like heat radiating from the ground below that kind of stuff, I think we get closer to the advertised uh, 35 degrees. And as I mentioned, I also tested the camera in SharpCap using the native driver of SharpCap. Now, something that I don't really like with uh, how SharpCap Sharp Cap works is apparently Tech has to provide uh, SharpCap native drivers that have a switch depending on the gain of low conversion gain to high conversion gain. And so this is the kind of result that we see. You can see we have the read noise in red with a suddenly some drop in read noise at around a gain of 500 in our case, which is not what you'll see in Nina. In Nina, you can choose, you have a, a drop down of low conversion gain and high conversion gain, and you can then set your own gain. So the way that the driver behaves in SharpCap and in Nina and other uh, applications is different. And I believe that this is because of what SharpCap has required. Still, it gives us a good idea of what we can expect with, uh, you can see that uh, sensor linear to 63%, that's actually bad, but I'm not sure exactly if that's uh, a big problem. I don't think it is, but just so you know, the measured sensor bit depth is 14, which is perfectly fine. And uh, we have, once we get into high conversion gain at uh, gain 500, again, this switch is only in sharp cap. In Nina, you can choose which one you want anytime. Then we get a read noise of 1.7 electrons and a dynamic range of 13.65, which is very close to the uh, best dynamic range of the camera of basically 14 stops, which is, I think, really good. The lowest uh, read noise we can achieve seems to be 1.2, but I think 1.7 is perfectly fine, especially with those huge pixels that will be getting a lot of photons per pixel. So in terms of accessories that come with the camera, by the way, we have a power adapter, which is always nice to see, although I never use it. Uh, we have a USB 3 uh, cable, and then you have adapters that go from the camera M54 thread to M48. And with that, you get the perfect uh, 55 millimeters of back focus distance for most telescope reducers. It also comes with an adapter ring to M42 if you need, uh, if you use M42 on your telescope. Although with that, and even to some extent with M48, you'll see likely on your full frame sensor, depending on the speed of your equipment, something like a little bit of vignetting. So that's something to keep in mind as well with a full frame sensor. It's very easy to get vignetting. And actually, if I take my two inch luminance filter by SV Boni and then compare it to the, uh, camera, the camera sensor. If I put one on top of the other, you can see the, uh, the sensor is almost covered by the edge 
of the filter. So I am sure we're going to get a slight amount of vignetting there by using M48, our two inch filters. And this is to me completely insane. And finally, there's a little uh, hex wrench, which is for the adjustment of the tilt on the camera. Next, we'll go to uh, me fitting the camera to my Red Cat 51 for the actual test setup that we'll be uh, doing. And you know, that will be uh, once I do the test revealing in a further video. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when that video comes out. While you're at it, please leave a like on the video. It helps the channel out and takes a second. And what do you think of this camera or its ZWSI var variant? Because on the Cloudy Nights forum, the ZW version of this uh, sensor has been called the Sleeping Giant. And I kind of like that name. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of that and the price, the price. It's a lot of money, but for a full frame sensor, it's so much cheaper than what currently exists. And of course, if you want to buy the camera or anything actually from uh, Tobtech or Agena or High Point Scientific or First Light Optics, etc., and you want to help me at no cost to you, if you do so after clicking the links that I have down in the description, it will help the channel out. If you want to help me more directly, I have Patreon and the link is down in the description. Or you can also join the channel as a member. It's the join button right next to the subscribe button. Anyway, let's go to the setup part with the Red Cat. I basically decided that I want to use my uh, Topetech filter drawer here so I can uh, use different filters with this color camera. And together with that, I will be using the Topetech off-axis guider. So we'll have like a, a fully Topetech imaging train. Obviously, that will also mean that uh, the ASI Air, it's out. <laughs> Oh man, the SI Air, it's such a cool toy, but it does not work with anything else than ZW, at least for cameras and focusers, and I guess rotators, and probably other stuff as well. It's such a shame. Anyway, yeah, I'll have to replace that with a mini PC. I'll probably use my Astro PC Pro, which I have featured on the channel before, and whose Wi-Fi antennas I've managed to break, but that's something else. Okay, so let me uh, put this camera on with the filter drawer and the off-axis guider and show you how it looks like. And this is how it looks like with the off-axis guider and filter wheel installed. And I think this is a thing of beauty. And I even still have access to the tilt adjustment screws if I wish to. So now putting it on the Red Cat, I'm getting something like this, which uh, does look pretty nice if I say so myself. And I just need to add the guide camera, which I'm surprised to see uses USB-C. It's the first time I see that from TubeTech, but that works perfectly fine. And this is how the final setup will look like for my first time playing with a full frame astrophotography cooled camera. What do you think of the camera so far? Let me know down in the comments. I'll have all of the links if you're interested in this camera or others as well. While you're leaving a comment, you can also leave a like, join the channel as a member or join my Patreon. The link is also in the description or buy anything from Agena, etc. with my links down below. But more important than all of that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.